Hey everyone, it is Brian Kaz here. Um, I'm also joined by my friend and business partner, Sean, Sean Casey. Uh, we have another uh, exciting call for you uh, this, this week, which we'll basically be talking about uh, what we learned after spending seven figures on Facebook ads. So we'll kind of give you uh, um, the knowledge we, we got and some extra tips and stuff and uh, some trends and stuff that we've seen that have actually changed o over time. So there's a lot of experts and stuff that say you should or shouldn't do this or or that and there's a lot of that stuff that you know may have been true like six months back or you know a year back but in some cases it's the complete opposite now uh, so there's a lot of people that are c confused as to why when they do something that a lot of you know a lot of guys out there claim is how how it works they'll basically try this stuff out and results will be the complete opposite um so uh we just thought it'd be kind of good to uh, sum up a lot of that stuff uh right here and uh basically tell you a bit about what we've been doing and what we've been helping others with um and uh hopefully you get some value and learn some stuff um along the way as as uh well there so without further ado uh we'll get the show on the road here with once more what what we learned after, after spending seven figures on facebook ads and once again my name is brian kaz and i'm also joined by sean casey so as you probably know, we have these calls every Wednesday at 2 p.m. East, Eastern, uh, where we'll have a live um, call, either like a Q&A or like a training call uh, for, for all of you. Uh, usually it will either be myself or Sean talking. Um, occasionally we'll have like a guest speaker, like I think last week um, we had a guest, guest speaker, but usually nine out of 10 or more, um, probably more, are uh, myself or Sean there. And if you're here or you're registered for this, series you'll get a reminder each week so don't forget but if you can't make one we'll have the recordings in the members area usually within a day of any of the calls under the training tab on the left side navigation bar so you would click on the training then you click on the wednesday calls and you see the most recent ones at the very top you can also search through and you'll see this one um would should be, be, be up there probably by tomorrow morning or for sure by tomorrow af afternoon, if not sooner, in case uh, you missed this call or have to go partway through or anything. And if you want a chance to win a hundred dollars today, make sure to join our free Facebook group, which you can get to if you go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. Again, that's getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. Um, if you're not yet yet a, a member, just click the join button. Uh, Sharon will approve of you probably within like a couple minutes or so. And towards the end of the call, we'll give you some, some instructions on what you should do uh, to have a chance uh, to win $100 that will actually um, will actually do the actual drawing live at the end of this call. We have to make sure that you join that free group right there. Now let's move on to the training for this week where we'll reveal what we learned after spending seven figures on Facebook ads. So for the, the overview, we'll talk a bit about what we learned. We'll give a bunch of tips and examples. Uh, we'll also talk about a bit about what we've done um, as well for ourselves and our clients. Uh, then we'll do a brief Q&A because we have uh, a, a lot of content on, on this call, so that, that, that'll probably take up a good chunk of time. And then we'll give some cash away. So what seven figures in Facebook ads has taught us. First of all, a lot of what some Facebook experts say out there basically either is not true, is very misleading, or was accurate at one point in time, um, but not another. So it, it, it can be a bit hard. For instance, some will say that video ads are always better than images. And others uh, will say that you need very exact, um, basically tar targeting to really pinpoint your target market's uh, in interests, um, you know, and their likes and such, uh, which isn't always the case. Lots of others will also vouch for man manual bidding versus automated. And many claim that you can get insanely cheap clicks or leads. And a lot of this times, not all the times, but a lot of the times, a lot of stuff is very misleading or actually completely false, or it's like kind of like you're only seeing just like a tinge of the truth. Um, and that can kind of lead you down a wrong path right there. So we'll explain why in just a second here. 
So we found that a lot of those for sure things are very, very de dependent upon a bunch of other factors and often not the case in our testing. And we've tested um, a lot of stuff. We have some very big, big budgets um, on a, a handful of different uh, niches and businesses, both of our own and of our clients and such. So we can kind of see what works and what does not work and also what can actually change over time. For instance, with a lot of our offers, uh, we found that targeting more broadly um, uh, with little to no tar targeting of interest tends to actually get far cheaper re results. Although with that, we often try to utilize look like odd, odd audiences and the like well, uh, which often can help a great deal. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a look like is, it's basically where you can upload a list of your buyers or you can have them or you can have like Facebook look at who basically buys your stuff or who be, becomes a lead or watches your videos or whatever it might might be and they'll create um, basically an audience that looks like them uh, that they'll try to go out there and run your ads to um, and if you don't have a lot of interest or you in some cases even have none but just try to target look like that can get far cheaper results in a lot of cases uh, we've also found that that automatic bidding um, can work quite well in large volume, where some manual bidding options uh, are hard to scale up. So uh, the difference between those two is when you start a Facebook ad, uh, the default usually is automated um, or automatic bids, which is basically where Facebook decides you know, what they want you to basically bid um, to get your ad shown. And they try, in theory, um, to get the best bang for your buck. Um, whereas manual bidding is where you set like the maximum that you would pay for like a certain amount of impressions and um, stuff like like uh, that. Um, and there's a lot of experts and stuff that say, you know, hey, the manual bidding is the way to, to, to go. And there's a lot of complex methods and strategies there. And although some, you know, can probably work in some cases, we found that, you know, it's not really the gospel. And it's not really like um, the guaranteed way. Um, to, to, to go. In fact, in a lot of cases, we, we found the exact opposite, especially when you're scaling up. Um, and, you know, with that, we found, hey, on a super small budget, sometimes the man, man, manual bidding can be a great way to get, like, you know, cheap leads and sales and stuff, but it was hard to scale um, on a super large scale. Um, so that's one thing that we found that was really interesting. And those dirt cheap leads and clicks that you oftentimes see, see others talk about. And I'm specifically talking about like ones that say, hey, hey, look, you know, I can get clicks for, you know, a penny or a fraction of a penny and I can get leads for like five cents or 10 cents. I can get sales for, you know, a dollar that buy like a thousand dollars then, you know, you, you, you know the ones I'm talking about. You know, a lot of the times it's actually those guys retargeting the prospects and it does not take into account the original cost to get those prospects to be retargeted too. So re retargeted is basically after you get a guy on your site or viewing your ad or your video, um, you can specifically send new ads to just those guys right there. So if it let like let's say let's say it costs you five dollars to get that first lead in, and then you retarget that guy, and let's say um, you know you turn that guy into a sale like let's say he buys you know i don't know a ten dollar product okay um and let's say because you retarget him let's say you get him to buy for you know it costs you maybe 50 cents let's say to retarget him or like a dollar to retarget him or w whatever it might be there's a lot of experts out there that say hey look i got a buyer for a dollar here look at me i'm awesome but they leave out the fact that it may have costed them you know five or ten dollars to get that initial prospect in their funnel before they could even retarget them. Um, and this actually happens quite a bit. Uh, a, a lot of examples that I see out there shown, shown by experts are actually based on retargeting um, and not what the actual raw cost is, including, um, you know, there's one, one guy that was showing, um, uh, he was showing like registrants for like, a, I think it was like a webinar and he was showing them in, in a niche where it was like, um, basically a quarter or so per 
lead or per re registrant for like a US lead, which typically would be more expensive. And I thought that doesn't seem right because um, that seems like insanely cheap. But once I got to like, um, once I actually talked to him and he you know, asked what he's basically doing, in the end, it turned out, no, the registrants were really like, you know, in the five to $10 per registrant, um, you know, in, in that range right there, which was more in line with what, you know, a lot of others might get. But when you see the examples, they show, hey, this is a quarter or 50 cents or so, it makes you think, hey, I can get super, super cheap registrants. So you feel bad, even if you get like, you know, guys at three bucks per, per lead, which might be really, really awesome, but you don't think it is when you see all these examples and such um, right uh, there. So we just wanted to kind of, you know, clarify that stuff and show that, you know, there's a lot of misinformation and misleading stuff out there. Uh, we've also seen a lot of changes happen over time with Facebook ads. For instance, with several of our ads, despite how Facebook at the time would say that it's better to have no text in your ad images, we found at the time that the best ads tend to have at least some text in them to alert the users to whatever the offer was. Like if we said free, whatever, or, or, or we said like limited time deal, or you know, some kind of text in the ad itself, we found that those every, or not every time, but almost every single time would win, hands down. And we found the ones that had no text in them, oftentimes uh, would be the losers. So we're like, okay, well, here's Facebook basically saying, hey, it's better to have no text, but all our examples at the time showed the exact opposite. <laughs> so we're like, okay, maybe we shouldn't trust what Facebook says. However, almost a year later, we're starting to find uh, almost the exact opposite in several cases that, um, you know, some, some Im 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 images with no text in them have been actually performing better despite how they were horrendous a year ago. In fact, we have some ads that were, you know, identical ads to what ran a year ago, and in one case, uh, you know, one would be clearly a loser, like the one without any without any text would be like a major loser, and the one with more text would be a clear winner. A year later, uh, in some cases, is the exact opposite. So stuff can actually change over time, and that's why it's important um, to basically test the stuff or follow people that do test test this kind of stuff right here. For Another example, at one point, we were seeing much better traffic on non-mobile traffic and on the desktop right side ad. So on the ads that weren't in the main news feed, but on the right side column, uh, we are seeing much, much better buying traffic or um, more so much better results in terms of the traffic actually buying stuff. However, over time, we noticed some better performances often would come up on the opposite end. So um, on the mobile side and not on, you know, just the desktop right side. So we found a trend that over time that actually became not the case. Um, so, you know, if there's like a report or someone you're following that read or saw or did some stuff a year ago or even six months ago, the stuff that, you know, they're basically teaching there might not be accurate now. Um, and in some cases might be the exact opposite. Um, so that's why it's always important to test stuff. That's why when we do any kind of large camp campaign, um, you know, I always have, you know, I, I try to, of course, weed it down to the winners, but I always leave a small amount of money in the budget to basically test other things and to leave those tests on on a smaller scale just to see if other trends um, basically change over time. And when when I notice the good stuff start to go bad, I have something where I can look at where I can look at the essentially can 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 controls and stuff in in the old ads and see hey are any of these maybe doing better now um and that's something that's kind of important to do um right there uh we've also seen a, a lot of growing trends and stuff where facebook pays more attention to the comments in your ads um, this is why you have to respond to them and be extra attentive and hide the bad ones instead of de de deleting them. If you just de delete them, Facebook might say, hey, well, you know, there's something wrong here. We might want to flag this, yada, yada. Yeah. And it's important to kind of like control the comments. Like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, the funniest thing, uh, we, we sold it at um, one point, we had a product that we sold for $5, okay? It was a 
a five dollar offer and it was something that you could get at a store for probably like 15 to 20 dollars so it was le like legitimately a pretty awesome deal and you would actually see comments that 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 would say this is a ripoff you can buy it at a store for ten dollars think about that we had it for five dollars including the shipping and everything and there actually were multiple comments i would say this is a ripoff because i can buy it for ten dollars even though it was usually more like fifteen dollars even if it was ten it was like hey so you're saying this is a ripoff because i can buy it for twice as much elsewhere so instead of just deleting the comment um you can say hey um you know great if you can buy some similar product for twice as much why wouldn't you want to buy it for half as much <laughs> and then you remind them that it's only five bucks right there and some of them feel kind of stupid and they're like oh never mind awesome um and when you interact with them not only can it help um facebook kind of see that you're there that you're being interactive um and that can help kind of um that can help your ad oftentimes get basically cheaper exposure but when a bunch of others see the comments and see that you're responding, they think, oh, gee, this is an attentive, you know, seller. He has some very awesome points. Here's a guy complaining that he can buy it for basically twice as much. And then they'll walk away thinking, oh, that guy's stupid. <laughs> of course I want this. Um, so rather than just de deleting stuff, you want to be responsive and interactive. Um, that's all, and, and all this is also why it's always important to test constantly and to follow people who test a lot um, as things can change over time because what works at one point won't necessarily work um, that way a few months later. So another thing that you have to be aware of that is your offer must also be super enticing um, and ideally be an impulse buy and by impulse buy it usually is like nothing over the $20 range. Now that's not like set in stone, um, but the cheaper the better. Like a true impulse buy is usually if it's like less than ten dollars. That's like super impulsive. But you know, usually under like the twenty dollar range is probably more of like the max end. Um, but again, there are always exceptions there, especially if it's something like really cool. Like if you have a really awesome gadget that's like you know three hundred dollars, but it's an insanely awesome gadget, you can still get an impulse buy. Um, but for like the masses, usually, you know, if it's less than like the $20 range, especially if it's less than like 10, people don't even think about it. They don't do research on it. They don't see if there's a cheaper deal elsewhere oftentimes. Um, you know, they don't do tons of research on, on it. They just are like, oh, that's really sweet for $10. Sure, I'll grab it. And you also need something to get them to take action now. This can be a limited time deal, a special discount, limited su supply, whatever. And, and, it, and it can be as easy as like, hey, special 50% off deal today only, or 50% off for the next X amount of hours. And you, you, you can have like a countdown timer. Um, we have a tool called Timer Magic, uh, which can let you easily kind of make your own countdown timers both on site sending emails and stuff and that's one that um you know can work really really well for this right here and it's i, I forgot the exact price but it's super super cheap um it would be what we'd call an impulse buy <laughs> um you it, it can also be sometimes easy as saying hey this is a limited time deal for like you know 50 percent off you know some kind of really good impulsive deal. And it, it, it can't just be, hey, save like, you know, five or 10 percent. It has to be a really good deal. It has to be a limited time because um, people will take action then. Um, and just to just give, give you an idea, um, I have a friend who has an offline store and he kind of ran the store almost as like a hobby, um, kind of on the, the side. And he had his, uh, you know, he was not retired, but he was at the age where like he had a job, but he was like semi retired, thinking about re retiring, and he, he had his son and, an, and another um, worker kind of run run the store of his, which was run almost like a ho hobby. I mean, made money, but wasn't like, you know, wasn't like a ton or anything. And his son, um, I think, like, uh, got like another job um, that was more in line with what he wanted to, to do long term. I think he moved. So um, eventually they decided to close down the store. And um, he ran basically a special deal that was for like, I think it was for like, it was like a three day offer um, where like 
you could save a lot of like anything in the store. And it was a limited time deal where like once that day is done, there's no other chance to buy anything there. And he was saying, I mean, it was absolutely crazy. This was a store that previously, you know, maybe in like an average day, they'd get like a few people. <laughs> um, he was saying that uh, uh, on the last three days, especially the last day, it was absolutely nuts. And he, he was, he, he sold like, I mean, um, th there were single people in there that literally bought hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. Um, in some cases, even over like a thousand where the average sale normally might be like, you know, like a 20 to $50 clearance where there were guys buying hundreds and hundreds of dollars of stuff each because they're like, Hey, this is a special deal. I have to take advantage of this now because it will be over with soon. And, uh, he was like shocked and thought, well, you know, geez, where were all these guys prior? Um, why, why weren't they buying, you know, you know, in the past, why they all sh show up the last th three days It's because, Hey, you had a limited time special deal where they knew they had to take action then. And they saw a set deadline in that where you have to get it then or the deal's gone. Kind of why like a lot of furniture stores and stuff oftentimes have like sales where it's like, Hey, save, save a third off, but They'll say the sale is only good through you know the weekend even though the very next week they'll probably have another deal that's almost the, the exact same but it gives you kind of like a deadline where you think gee i really like you know that couch there it's a third off now the deal ends in the day yeah i should probably grab it now um rather than if they know that it's the normal price and they have unlimited time to think about it the thought is, oh, well, that's a nice couch, but you know, maybe there is a better couch elsewhere. You know, maybe I just haven't seen a better couch. Maybe I should browse more. And um, you know, then they'll start to, to look, and they get basically distracted by all this other stuff. And then a week or two two later, they still haven't bought because they're being d distracted and they don't have you know basically an urgent need to buy it right then and there. But a limited time deal uh, can do just that. So you want to make sure that. You use that on your offers. Also, it's important to, to, to note that the money is made almost entirely on the back end funnel, on the upsells, um, you know, on the email offers, um, so on and, and so forth. So it's made almost entirely from the funnels and not just on the front end. And you need to have better, longer funnels with multiple offers. Um, and I've seen a lot of clients that make a lot of mis mistakes where they'll only sell like a single offer. And you know, the biggest mistake you could make is to sell like a $7 offer and that be your only offer. <laughs> Cause you're leaving just so much money on the table. It's not even funny. Even if you're a high end seller, I've se seen guys that, you know, basically do okay. And that they'll sell like a high end offer of like a thousand dollars or, you know, basically anything um, in that range there. And once they get a buyer, they don't do squat. They, they're like, okay, this is awesome. And they don't try to market anything else to that guy. Whereas if someone gives you $7, let alone $1,000, they trust you and they're more likely to buy more from you. So take advantage of that. You know, Basically offer them more stuff that fits their needs um, where uh, again, um, you can help them help you by basically giving you more money and you can help them by basically giving them what they need or want and again you want to have an extensive funnel so first you want to have something that gets leads in so in some cases you can bypass the leads and go straight to like a sales page but typically you know you want to take advantage of getting leads um, so you want to have some kind of offer that gets a bunch of those leads in then you want to have some kind of like a front end offer this is usually like a cheap offer or like an impulse buy um, where you start to make a decent amount of dough um, or i should say a decent amount of sales off that um, you know and it it, it could be as cheap as like a $5 offer or like anything like that, but it's something to get their credit cards out. Um, then after that, you want to have a one-time offer or a, a series of upsells essentially, where after they buy, let's say the $7 item, you want to say, Hey, now that you bought this, um, you would probably also be interested in this other thing right here. That might be like $17 or so. And then after they buy that, you might want to show some um, additional upsells, including reoccurring options where there might be like a monthly fee and they can, take advantage of some club or membership of yours or some other tools or whatever it might be right there. Um, and then of course, um, after all that, you can show them some additional backend offers where maybe on a thank you page, you have a special offer for like another thing. Um, 
And on top of that, all those leads that you get, you want to be marketing to those leads and mailing those leads more and more offers and stuff down the line as well. So you don't want to just stop right there. You want to continuously do as much as you can to make as much as you can, um, you know, off uh, of all those leads and all those sales um, right there. And what you'll oftentimes find is even though the funnel kind of goes down right here, we see, hey, the most leads are at the start. When you talk about money and stuff, sometimes it can be the exact opposite where um, the higher back end stuff that might be like, let's say a thousand dollars plus, you won't get as many sales, but more of your actual profits can sometimes be from those right there too. So, um, you know, it, it's a shame if you like limit yourself to only just a front end sale um, right there. And, you know, they're like, sometimes the difference is like, you know, again, if you sell like a $7 item, you know, you're only making seven bucks right there. And if you're advertising for it, you know, you have less than $7 um, to spend in ads to make a profit. Whereas if you have a back end of, let's say you sell a $7 thin, then you have like a $15 offer, then you have a $50 offer, then you have like $19 a month offer. And on the back end, you might have like a thousand dollar offer. Instead of the front end guy only being worth seven bucks, on average, he might be worth many times that because you might have if even a couple guys really you know if they grab the high-end stuff they could be worth many 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 times that uh, where all of a sudden it might be like hey if you spend ten dollars to buy or to basically get a seven dollar buyer that's worth thirty dollars to to you you're making still a lot more but your competitors who are only selling that then on the front end can't compete with you because they can't spend ten dollars to only make seven um, Whereas you can, because instead of making $7, you might really be making 30. And that's what uh, Sean and I do in a lot of our funnels and stuff. Um, in, in some cases, you actually spend more than what the front end is actually worth because you make way, way, way more on the back end there. But we find um, almost every business that you know we've, we've, we've actually dealt with either doesn't do this or they don't do a good enough job at it. And you can always be expanding and improving upon that um, as as uh, well right there and you know I, I've seen guys like even some like well well-known guys that again um, don't have any offers or you know they'll make a sale they'll have a couple upsells but then they don't market anything else to those leads because their 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 mindset is oh well I already sold them what I wanted to sell them so why would I continue to market them it's like well they'll probably buy a bunch of other stuff so either market basically other offers of of, of yours or sign up to be an affiliate for other related offers that you could sell them because you'll make a lot more money off of that. Another thing to note is that free plus uh, sh sh shipping and hand handling offers um, can work really, really great as a good, it, 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 as basically a good impulse buy uh, front, front end. And here's why. So, you know, let's say your goal is to make $5. Now, obviously, you know, you probably want to make more than that, but let's just say for, for right now, your goal is to make $5 on a product just for the purpose of this example. There's three different options here that you can do to get $5, but you guys can tell me of these three, three examples, what you think most people typically would think of them. So here's the first option. The first option is a product for $2.50 with shipping and handling for $2.50. So in that case, you're making the $5, right? Most people think of it like this kid right here. They're like, ugh, I have to pay money up front and then I also have to pay for shipping? Oh, this really sucks. Even though it's only $5, they think, oh, that sucks. I have to pay for this product and I have to pay for shipping. They'll, they'll say, oh, this, this is just such a bad deal because in, in, in their head, they'll think, well, I can go on Amazon and get, you know, shipping for free if I have like a, a prime account and they'll immediately be upset um, at little stuff like that right there. So you could try option two, which is a $5 product with free shipping and handling. The problem with that is you'll probably be a bit like this guy right here, where it's kind of like, oh, well, free shipping and hand handling is cool, but they'll think, oh, almost every product on Amazon has, or not every product, but a lot of them have free shipping and handling. So they naturally think, oh, well, I could just search Amazon or I could just buy this elsewhere. Or that's not really a good deal. I have to pay five bucks. 
um, doesn't sound as enticing. You'll still get some guys that will buy that, especially if it's a good offer, but it doesn't sound as good. Whereas option three is you have a free product and then you charge $5 for shipping and handling. Now with that, even though all three of those cases, in the end, the customer is still paying five dollars. They're paying the exact same thing in all in all three three cases. But in this case, they get real excited because they all think, "Oh man, this is a free product. Free is awesome. This is great. Oh, it's five dollars to to ship. Oh, that's a reasonable pr uh, price. You know that makes sense. Uh, you know this is still an awesome deal." right here and it's that initial mindset of theirs is hey this is free and then when they see that hey they still have to pay the five dollars for ship shipping and hand handling a lot of them will still think hey this is still a pretty good offer because they'll they'll reason hey i might have to even pay more you know else elsewhere and that five five dollars to, 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 to ship isn't a crazy amount or anything like that they think it's an awesome deal but again logically it doesn't make a ton of sense because all three are the exact same amount of money but psychologically, the third option is what gets a lot of guys most excited. So you can try to incorporate that into your marketing a bit, um, uh, especially on those impulse buys, and those cheap, cheap things and such to really get a lot more sales. And uh, this can greatly increase the conversion rate um, on, on a lot of stuff right here. Now, some other key take takeaways here are that for Facebook ads, uh, you, you want to absolutely use pixels. Um, and optimize for leads first and later sales uh, because you want to have at least 50 or so of each to start with to get some good data. So, um, you know, and, and what, what I mean by, by that is, um, you know, once you have a pixel and once you give Facebook a lot, you know, a lot of data, they can turn that around and use that to create a look like audience. Um, and they can use that to further optimize your ads and a whole bunch of other things like, like that. Whereas, um, if you only have like one or two sales, you know, there's not a lot of data off that. It could be completely random that there's, you know, a 50 year old lady who likes Metallica that bought your cat toy. And, you know, if Facebook looks at, you know, those one or two sales, they can't possibly assume that, oh, hey, every person that likes cats, therefore, is a 50 year old lady that likes Metallica. Whereas if you have like 50 sales or 50 leads or so, and they're like, hey, of these 50 sales, it looks like a lot of them tend to be older women. Oh, and hey, it looks like a lot of them tend to like, you know, rock rock bands and stuff. Uh, so that they can try to like optimize and do a better job of like knowing who to basically target the more data you get there. Um, you also really want to know your data and your, and your target audience. And oftentimes might not be who you think. An example of this, is um, I've actually talked to a number of businesses um, who thought that their best buyers or their target uh, pr prospects were completely different uh, than what they really were. Like I've talked to to ones that thought that you know their their ideal buyer would be a guy in basically their 20s or 30s, when it basically turned out that they're more likely to be the older ones um, that were like over 50. And I've also seen ones where they they uh, they insist that you know their target market you know is males of a certain age, and when you look at the actual data, it might be that hey, did you know the majority of your sales are actually women, even though logically it didn't actually make sense to them. It doesn't really matter if it makes sense. It matters if you know your data or not. So you really need to look and know who your buyers are. Some some other things here is that the actual images you use on your, your, your ads and stuff oftentimes can make a huge difference in the ROI that you get because they need to stand out and summarize what your offer is. So they need to pop out first and foremost. And I find that the better job you can do of summarizing your offer and make it and making it super quick for a person that just basically glances at it to know what it is, what your offer is, the better. It's kind of like if you have a web page or like an opt-in page or a sales page, there's, there's like a rule that you only have like a couple seconds to grab a person's attention. And I think it's the same, if not less time when it comes to actual ads, especially on Facebook and such. So you wanna have something that they clearly and obviously know what your offer is and have it stand out. You also wanna make sure you use links in the text and the description as well of your ad uh, too. And that can help because um, you, know, you might have an ad and even though uh, we know that you can click it 
and go to the page or whatever, a lot of people don't necessarily think of that. So if you have a link that they can also click, um, that can increase the amount of clicks that you get right there. And especially for smaller audiences, like if you have a very small market, um, you know, the, the images that you use occasionally need to be refreshed to newer stuff to stand out. So if you have a huge odd audience, it's not always as important. Um, if you have a very small one, they get used to that you know, image over time. And if you change it to a different one, it can basically pop out more and a different segment of that audience might actually respond essentially better uh, to, to that right there. So over time, you, know, you might have to replace the ads that, that you have. And the more broad of an offer uh, that you have, the more mass appeal um, you'll have as well, and the likely, um, and and more more likely, the cheaper your results will be. So if you if you have an offer that basically a lot of people, you know, could could uh, use or would really like, uh, typically you'll get much cheaper and better re results. Whereas if, if you have one that's only like unique to a very specific smaller group, um, you know, it's harder to really pinpoint those guys down. It's hard, harder to oftentimes get really good re re results off that. Not in all cases, um, but I find in, in, a, in a lot of cases there. And also, um, you know, the, the ad methods and stuff that you use will change depending on what and who you're targeting. And this is even more true on the price point uh, that you're selling it at. So the exact method that you you would do, um, just because one works for you know one product, won't necessarily mean that it'll work for everything out there. That's why it's even more important to test stuff. Um, and that's since like methods for selling cheap stuff oftentimes don't necessarily work as well for selling expensive stuff. Um, for instance, for like an impulse buy, you can sell or you you can send send guys straight to like an opt in page or straight to like a sales page um, and get some immediate sales uh, right off of that without having to warm them up or do anything else. Um, in some cases, if you warm them up or do other stuff, it, it, it can be a waste of money if it's an impulse buy. You know, it's kind of like um, you know if you're selling, um, let's say like a candy bar to person that's hungry for a candy bar, you don't really need to warm them up as to why they should buy a candy bar off of you. If they're hungry, they're gonna buy one as an impulse buy. Whereas if you're trying to sell them like a $50,000 car, um, even if they are interested in a car and they like that car, you still have to kind of warm them up most of the time to convince them that the car that you have um, is the model that they that they want. Or even if they already know that they want a certain model, sometimes you even still have to convince them that that's the model that's truly the best deal for them right there. So oftentimes, uh, for like the, the impulse buys, the free plus shipping can work really well. Uh, whereas for the more expensive stuff, sometimes you might have to warm them up um, with either like a blog post or, or with like some video con content. Um, and you can have a blog post with like case studies or stuff like that, like if you're selling like a web service or whatnot. And then you can retarget those guys later, knowing that they all had an interest in the information that you gave. So they'd likely be. Um, a better prospect, then you can retarget them and over time um, make them more likely to turn into an actual buyer for your higher end product or service or offer. You also want to know your competition, research them, check out their offers and comments, mimic what works. Don't try to be 100% new and unique, especially if it's unproven. Um, so this is a, a, a lot of guys kind of like don't do any research and they try to build stuff from scratch instead of trying to see what else is currently working out there. Uh, and this is like, you know, even if you look at like cars and stuff, since we're just, you know, I'm, you know, on the topic there, um, you know, a lot of the new models aren't brand new. They're based on existing models. They're based on d designs um, that, have, that have been around even on other model cars. Um, so the body of it oftentimes is the exact same. They just change a few li little things here and there. So it's basically a proven model that kind of works. So that's kind of how you want to mimic a lot of your stuff too. You also want to test the easy way first versus the harder way. So rather than trying to build out an entire funnel from scratch, an entire 
front end from scratch that you have no clue if it will will work. And rather than buy like tons of inventory for selling like a physical product, you can use stuff like AliExpress dot dot com where um, they sell all sorts of stuff and they can drop ship it for you. Um, so you can kind of test stuff there first to see if it works. Or if you're or if you're trying to sell, let's say like a thousand dollar item, um, you know, in in like a market. You can test some kind of like a free offer, like a free book or a free report, just to see what the click cost is or what the per lead cost is to give you an idea if you think you know it could economically uh, make sense uh, for you right there. You also can try to do some giveaways, which can work really well. So, um, what what you're trying to test the market or just a lot of or or get just a lot of cheap uh, leads, you can do like a giveaway. But you have to make sure that the offer is enticing and, and related to the niche or the product uh, that you're trying or the service that you're trying to uh, sell. And um, if you can't get cheap leads off of that, that's probably an indicator that you might have a harder time trying to sell sell stuff there. And but by cheap leads, you know, you know, like in giveaways, you can get leads in some cases for like a quarter to 50 cents, even for like US leads in a semi competitive market if the offer is good. Um, but you also want, want to make sure that once you have them sign up, so they basically enter their email to be part of the giveaway or the con contest, and you want to make sure to show them some backend offers. So um, you know they have have an upsell or something in 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 there where you can try to see, hey, do any of these people buy? And then you want to market to those guys, you know, on the email list as well. That can be a great way to build a list fast right there, and it's something my uh, myself and Sean have done quite a bit as uh, well. You also want to test a variety of ad tech techniques and methods from um, having them go straight to a sales page to maybe straight to just an opt-in page or straight to, to like a giveaway page or just like a blog or content page or like a video page first to see what works, like see what seems to get the cheapest clicks, uh, what seems to get uh, the cheapest leads or, or sales. And again, depending upon the product and the price point and the niche, all that stuff can change a bit. You also want to test a variety of different front end and upsell offers until you get the true winners. A lot of people just try one thing and they never test or change anything. Like, uh, and when they do test, test or change stuff, they might not change the front end or they might not change the upsell or they might not change just a ton of stuff there. So you want to always be testing new stuff. When Sean and I, um, you know, do some some of our stuff, we're always trying to test new front ends, new upsells. And like, even if there's something that has worked for like a year and has done decently well, we'll still test new things to see if we, we can do even better. Um, and if something's a loser, you, you know, you definitely want to go and test and see if you can find something better there. Um, Cause that oftentimes can make the difference from like an okay campaign or even a bad one to a really, 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 really awesome one. And most of all, know your numbers. Um, a lot of people I find and a lot of clients simply don't know what their average client is worth. They don't know what their average sale is worth. And if you don't know your numbers, it's very hard to kind of know what you should be spending to obtain a new one. Like let's say if you if you had a good back end and you knew that your $7 buyer was actually worth $30, if you spent $10 or $15 on, on him, you'd be fine because if you spent 15, which is like twice as much as what um, you know you sell, sell you know on the front end, you'd know that hey, you would double your money, which almost everyone would probably say hey, that's a pretty sweet deal right there. But if you don't know your numbers, a lot of people might say, well, I sell it for seven bucks, you know, maybe I make a couple dollars on the back, and I'm not really sure. Then all of a sudden it's like, hey, that's a pretty bad deal, so they won't spend the 15 to get the seven, and the whole thing fails because they don't know that hey, they really were making a lot more. So you really really have to know your numbers um, you know, to get this all to, to work at its prime. Now, in some cases, you might luck out where on the front end, you're making a profit. So then, but you know, even then, you want to still know what those guys are worth to, to you. And on top of it, don't just know your numbers of what um, you know, the value of the sales or leads are, are worth, but also you know what your conversion rates are for, for leads, for sales, for all the upsells. Know all that stuff so you can see what's currently winning and what is currently doing not so great you can maybe fix there so what have sean and i done with our knowledge and all this right here well we've actually grown multiple seven 
figure businesses over the years uh, through paid, paid, paid ads, including some that are completely new niches to, to us. So even ones that uh, were like, you know, completely new to, 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 to us, we are still able to actually grow relatively quickly and large, which goes to a show. It's not like you have to necessarily be like a top expert and have, you know, a set niche that is like, you know, your life niche and that's, that's it. You can constantly do new stuff as long as you know how to do paid ads and as, as long as you know how to do this stuff well, because a lot of the rules that work for uh, one, one then apply to basically almost anything. Um, it's just a matter of testing and just a matter of like making sure that, you know, you have the funnels, making sure that you market to, to the leads, making sure you have the good ads, the good tar tar targeting and you follow the best practices and all that right there. As far as what we've done for other clients, well, one client we actually took from around 6,000 a, a month to over 100,000 a, a month in about a half a year's time, which is a pretty big jump right there. Then about a year later, we actually took him to about a quarter million a month in sales in that business right there. In a short while after that, to over 300,000 a month. And about a year or so after that, to, uh, we, we, we actually got it up to about $500,000 a, a month. And that was about two years basically after that initial $6,000 per month start right there, all through our help and through our knowledge of paid ads right here. So, um, you know, it's fairly easy to basically grow and expand a business um, if you have the proper stuff in place. Um, and you know, it's especially even going from like the 6K to 100 grand was pretty quick. Um, like, you know, I say a half year, but that that may have been even like three three months or so, I'm not quite sure the exact time, but it was pretty quick um, right, right there. Because once you have the stuff in place, it can move fast. Another client runs some of the biggest events world, worldwide, and we actually helped uh, reduce their cost per re 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 registrant so, so much that they were actually able to run about five additional events the next month um, after they initially hired us just to help them with just one or two events. So the stuff went well there, and they, they, they were able to um, run five additional events and get our help uh, with those as well on the Facebook ad side. And even better, they didn't even realize um, how much untapped revenue that they had in their back end. Like this is one of those places that despite being a huge business, despite having um, these, you know, large, large, you know, events worldwide and all that, um, and having like lots and lots and lots of leads, they never even realized how much money they had sitting in their back end. So again, we don't just, or, in, you know, in this case, we didn't just help them with their Facebook ads. We also helped them um, kind of see what they could do to expand their revenue, to um, make their funnel better, to make their back end worth a lot more. Another example, a member of a mastermind of ours, uh, we helped to show how they were wasting about 80% of their ad spend on Facebook on basically a bunch of ads that weren't getting them good re results while they were ignoring basically the 20% of ads that were getting the majority of their sales for a ton less. So they looked at everything as a whole and said, hey, this is working, you know, okay or pretty decent. And they couldn't see the fact that like 80% of that was not so great, but there was basically 20% that was really awesome that made the rest of it look okay to decent. Um, and they didn't focus on that small bit that was working really, really, really well. Um, so it's important to kind of know, you know, what, what what your numbers look like, know the performance of, uh, of your ads and really understand the numbers uh, to kind of know this stuff right here. And that was the kind of thing that um, we actually caught that within like probably 10 minutes, like the first 10 minutes looking at their, their stuff, we immediately saw, hey, this is an issue right here. Um, you're basically wasting four fifths of your budget and you're ignoring the one fifth that's basically making a huge portion of all your sales right here. That was caught literally within like 10 minutes or less of us looking at it. Now we have a track record of helping others with, with their ads and just as importantly, helping them with their offers and, and their funnels and their leads and such as well, which is something that basically others simply don't help with despite its importance. I mean, in my opinion, and if you talk to any serious mark, marketer, oftentimes just if not more important uh, than the actual ads themselves are the funnels and the offers. Um, you know, kind of go 
hand, hand, hand in hand there. But a lot of like Facebook experts and stuff out there won't even focus on the offer or they won't even focus on the funnel. They only focus on the ads, which is kind of dumb. Um, you know, it's kind of like you can focus on getting the best and fastest car possible. But if you don't also focus on making sure there's gas in it, it doesn't matter. If you, if you don't also focus on making sure that there's a road, a paved road for it to drive on, it doesn't matter. A Lamborghini won't go all that fast without gas, and it won't go all that fast driving through a bunch of rocks on a mountain. <laughs> and it's something that like a lot of people just don't realize the importance of that. And But when all of it is working together, it can work insanely well. Now, we have a couple spots open to help others. So we thought we'd basically reach out here first uh, to see if there might be a great fit or two out, out there. Now, obviously, this is not for, for everyone. And I, I know there's plenty of you that might not have, have a business that uh, does you know, that, that much or anything like that. And you know, if so, hopefully you got some, some info off of this that, that could be of help to, to you. But if you're thinking that, hey, this is really awesome, I think I could possibly benefit by getting some help on my own ads, my own offers and funnels, um, or even just um, having us run the ads for, for you, we have a few options for you that range from just a one-time consulting to basic ongoing consulting to even a full-fledged ad management. So if, if, if you want us to run your ads completely hands-free for you, we can do that. Um, if you want us to just do like a one-time consulting where we review everything, like your funnels, your offers, you know, your ads, we can do that uh, as well. If you want ongoing help, um, we have an option for that as well. But obviously, the price goes way, way up when we handle everything right there because a lot of the clients that we have um, are quite large businesses and stuff, and it has to be obviously worth our time right there. So with that, this obviously isn't cheap, and it's not for everyone. Um, so, and just to put this in pers perspective, the cheapest option is not less than $1,000. And that's just for, to have us look at, again, the um, one time, you know, we'll basically analyze your main offer, your funnel, you know, and your ads and stuff, or for a monthly fee, we can help with ongoing consulting, which we have some, some guys that pay us for uh, uh, that uh, right there. And we also have some that pay on a large amount for ongoing uh, complete ad management. So we have all those options um, right there. And we just thought we'd basically reach out. We know there's probably not um, necessarily, um, you know, a ton of people that would be a perfect fit, but that's why we want you guys to kind of um, reach out to us if you think we, we could be of help to you. And we'll see, um, you know, if you have a business or an offer that we think is, is basically a good fit um, that we know that we could help to get awesome results with. So not all the businesses out there, um, we would probably think that, hey, we definitely know that we could help this this guy or gal right there, but a lot of them we oftentimes uh, can, so it has to be a good fit both ways because we won't take a client that we don't think that we can help. Um, but if you think that's something you would be interested in, uh, for right now we just thought we'd mention this on this call right here to give you guys the first shot uh, right here. Simply email uh, me at uh, brian at webfire.com and list off what your business or your offer is, what ads, if any, you've tried tried in the past, the results that you've gotten for your funnel, if any, um, and what your current revenue has been as, as well, as well as any other relevant info that you think um, I should know, like more about what essentially the product is or more about the background uh, that uh, you have or your business has or anything like that right there. And Sean and I will take a look at all these. And if we think um, that it would be a good fit, and if we know that we can get you awesome re results with our, our help, we can, we can schedule a call um, and go from there. So we, 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 again, we just want to give you guys the first uh, shot at this right here. And we want to see um, you know, if you think it would be a good fit, by all means, reach out to us right there. Again, just write Brian at Webfire com and basically tell us a bit about what your your offer is um, and what your you know what what your offer or your business or your service or product is um, a bit about what you've done uh, the results you've gotten what the current uh, revenue and such is and you know again like what you think um, 
you're basically doing a good job or a bad job at. And uh, we'll see if uh, we think we might be a good fit with that. Because once you find a good fit, like, and it goes basically both ways, it's really easy to kind of ramp up results and go from there. I mean, oftentimes the difference from like um, a business that is basically doing okay to doing great or being able to expand way, way, way faster and make way, way, way more oftentimes is only a few missing key, key ingredients. Um, and for guys like myself and Sean that have gone through this a lot, oftentimes it's super easy to spot what those issues are fairly quickly um, and get uh, very, very awesome re re results. So again, if that's of interest to you, make sure to reach out to, to me right there, uh, but make sure you do that soon because again, this is only open for like a, a sh short time right here um, and probably only for uh, pro pro probably like a couple spots uh, or so because obviously, we're working hands-on here, so we can't take like a ton of clients here. So we just thought uh, we would reach out to you guys and see if anyone might be a good fit right there. So with that, if there's any other questions or anything like that, um, you can feel free to ask those right now. I know Sean and Sharon have been, been answering a lot um, in the background uh, here in the chat box. Um, and you can also have a chance uh, to win some cash as well. So as you type in your questions, uh, you can also go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. Again, that's getwebfire.com forward slash FB group to join our free Facebook page. Uh, you'll see a post from Sharon in, in the past hour that basically asks what you thought of to, today's call. If you leave a comment within that post right there, we'll pick a winner and just probably like a minute or two, um, and we'll actually do the random drawing in front of you and they'll win $100 live. So make sure you go there uh, right now and you'll see the post from Sharon towards the uh, top, basically asking what you thought on today's call. Um, and you leave any kind of comment like what you thought or maybe a recommendation for, for like a future call or anything at all and uh, we'll pick a random winner um, in a minute or two. In the meantime, uh, Sean, if you've seen any questions or anything like that, I know you've, you've been answering some, um, but if it's any that you haven't answered yet, uh, feel free to shout those out and we'll try to answer them. Yeah, so one question here is, you know, could, do we, could we provide this service to somebody who's just got a store they just started? Um, you know, it depends on what the offer is and it depends on your background and stuff. Like if it's one where like you've never sold anything online and you've never done anything thin at all and you don't even have like a product yet, um, it's a bit more hard for us to like, you know, expand what isn't there. But if it's like, let's say you have an awesome product lined up, but maybe you don't have as much experience, um, you know, on the ad side, that could possibly be a fit um, right there. It just, it, it depends. Uh, whereas like, you know, if you're like a business that, you know, you, you have some sales, you've done some ads, but you, know, you think that you, you could, you know, expand a lot more. Um, oftentimes there's like little, um, little tweaks and stuff that we can do and help, help you, you with that can have massive results and allow you to actually grow more. So, you know, in some cases, it could maybe work with the person who's more new with like an awesome offer, but it's, that's more of like kind of case by, by case. So um, it's, it's best probably to uh, just write, uh, again, send like a quick email to Brian uh, at, at webfire.com. But if, if, if you're one that's like, hey, I don't know what, to sell, I don't have any idea, I've never sold anything, I don't know how to make, make an offer. This isn't the kind of offer for you then. This is this is much more of like how to grow kind of something existing that, that you have um, now. Anything else you wanna add on that, Sean? No, I think that's the case. And, and, I, and for anybody who is not sure about like, you know, if we can help you, how we can help you, just as Brian said, write up a description of, hey, this is my business model, here's my revenue, here's what, whatever you know about your business, and then send that info into uh, Brian, and we'll respond and tell you, hey, you know, the business is too small, or uh, it's, the business is unlikely to be too big, um, but, you know, what we would suggest is a way that that we could help you or not 
Um, if the business is not a good fit for some reason, uh, we'd tell you that because we're just going to be really straightforward with you. It's, um, but we've helped a lot of people in a lot of different markets, um, and uh, including, you know, unlike uh, most people that are talking about Facebook ads, we spend our own money uh, on our own ads and, uh, you know, take take the the risk, so to speak, ourselves. That, that makes us, I think, a lot smarter than the guy that uh, um, is more than willing to spend your money. And if it doesn't work, oh, man, that's too bad. I guess your stuff sucks. Um, and and uh, I think Brian mentioned earlier uh, that uh, we have hired um, people to run ads uh, that are highly respected, that speak at conferences, uh, to see what we could learn. What can we learn from these guys? We're paying them 7000 or $10,000 a month, and um, we didn't learn much. We spent a lot of money. Um, but because, you know, hey, if we, you know, increased our results by 10 or 15 or 20 percent and, you know, cranked up more profits, it certainly would be worth it. Um, to us to have spent that money, but um, you know they sucked at what they did in terms of their time, attention to detail, and everything else. Um, and that's you know what we find out from a lot of people that have hired um, someone to run ads is um, you know they weren't smarter than them, and we might not be smarter than you. You guys might be running you know ten million dollars a month worth of business and and be super ninjas at Facebook ads, and you know we might not be able to help someone in that case. But if you are, send us an email. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and as, 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 as we're saying there, I mean, it, it's very rare for like us to find some, someone where there's like absolutely nothing to fix. Like even in like some, some businesses that are basically doing like what they say would be like an awesome job. There's oftentimes still money left on the table where like one or two easy tweaks can make a massive difference. Like I've, I've even seen some like huge, um, you know, huge biz businesses uh, worth millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars that make some of the dumbest mistakes out there. Even though like everything as a whole seems to be like, oh, they're doing a pretty good job here. Then when you look a, a little bit deeper, you're like, oh, do they know that they're actually leaving probably like half of their profits on the table still? <laughs> um, so again, regardless of the case that you think you are, feel free to shoot us an email and uh, we'll see if we can be of help. I mean, if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. And that's um, that's that. But uh, uh, yeah, so even if you're unsure, shoot, shoot us an email and we'll take a look and go from there. Um, and in, in the meantime, make sure to leave leave a comment and uh, we'll do, do, do the drawing in just uh, a few seconds here, um, Sean, unless there's anything else that you've seen that's popped up. No, no, I think we could do the drawing and right. uh, give it a wrap. And again, you, you know, if you've got a business and you want help, send an email as soon as this webinar is over. All righty. All right, so here is the page. Here's the post from Sharon right here. All right, give you guys maybe five more seconds to leave leave a comment here. Five, four, three, two, one. It looks like a few posted in the wrong one, but that's okay for right now. All right, so um, time's up. So there's one posted there. Two, three, plus the main one. So 35 in total. All right. One to 35, who do you think will be the winner, Sean? 23. 12. <laughs> Almost right in the middle of your guess. Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, Cha Gable. Uh, if this is you and you have two dogs that are puppies, uh, congratulations. You can get them a lot of dog treats because uh, you are $100 richer, or you will be, um, as soon as you post up your PayPal email to Sharon in the chat box. So once again, uh, congratulations to Cha Gable uh, for being this week's Wednesday Marketing Webinar winner. Um, so with that, um, 
you know, can congrats to Cha right there. And definitely, if you think that, um, you know, we might be a, a fit right there, just shoot us an email and see. Again, it's just uh, Brian uh, at webfire.com and uh, let us know a bit about you. And even if not, hopefully um, you got some good, good, good info off the call right here. And if you have any ideas for some future calls, um, let us know. So uh, um, I know uh, later this month, we'll probably at some point do more um, website or biz business analysis and stuff. Um, but if you have any other ideas for other topics that you'd like to see, let, let us know. Also make sure to check some of our, our prior calls as well, because uh, we have tons and tons and tons of calls on all sorts of topics. So we probably covered a lot of stuff that you might uh, be interested in as well. Uh, but with that, I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of the, the uh, week. And again, uh, if, uh, if, if you have any other questions um, about that offer, just write brian at webfire.com. If you have any other questions in general on basically other stuff, um, or if we missed miss, miss any questions, just write support at webfire.com. So with that, hope you guys again have a great rest of the week, and we'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.